Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of House of Cards. This is episode 19, and today we're going to do something completely new that I haven't done on this channel yet, which is we are going to do a grade reveal because I just got back my um, small shipment that I had at SGC. So I got to have a second to let you guys know something I jumped onto the hype train of SGC earlier this summer when people were starting to uh, talk about them as being the new sort of, uh, you know, replacement for PSA because um, PSA was so backlogged, especially after they had that temporary closure uh, when COVID first broke out. And SGC did have a prime, prime opportunity to jump in and become the leader because their claim to fame was that they're not going to be having the extreme delayed uh, return times that PSA was experiencing. So I know myself and a lot of other uh, hobbyists decided, hey, why not? Let's give SGC a try. So we jumped onto their website. We started getting submissions over to them with the idea that it would be back in, you know, hey, maybe, maybe worst case scenario, 60 days, maybe sooner. We'll see. Well, that kind of all was a pipe dream. And I think what happened was because of that flood of uh, people wanting an alternative to PSA and BGS for that matter, um, I think it pretty much caused the same effect over at SGC and basically overwhelmed their system and basically caused them to get backed up. So with that, I um, have to say that this video is going to be a little bit of a, I guess you can call it a little bit of a rant about my experience with SGC. I, you know, I do have a positive thing I want to say. I want to say that they definitely did do a good job of um, responding to any inquiries I had. I definitely was very happy about the way they handled, you know, any emails I sent and any customer service sort of, uh, you know, kind of communication was really, really good. Um, I, I have to give them a 100% score for that because they, they definitely held up their end of great customer service. Um, I can't say the same for uh, BGS as that's been a little bit of a of a you know what show with them and you know what PSA is fine um, they're very kind of transactional and, and easy but with SGC I actually got direct emails from you know uh, some of their account managers when I was just you know emailing into their basic customer service uh, info emails so felt really good about that I had a personal touch I had someone I can reach out to at any given time if I had questions or problems or was just you know wanting to know what was going on my, my reason for reaching out was because I was moving and I wanted to see if I could change the address ahead of time um, on the order so that way I didn't have to think about it um, when I moved and they were really accommodating and, and it was really good so um, kudos for that um, so one thing I do got to say though is those uh, those return times were pretty brutal so um, I'll show you here but basically my submission went out August 17th, um, they received it. So that wasn't when it went out. It probably went out early August. Um, they received it, put it into their system on the 17th. And I just got it back today on December 5th. So assuming I sent it on August 5th, you know, you're talking August to September, September, October, October, November, November, December. You're talking about four solid months. Okay, well, is that better than PSA? Yeah, it is probably going to be a couple months faster than your bulk sort of value uh, PSA submission timelines right now. However, as we'll dive into this video, you know, those two months you might save, is it worth it? And I guess that's where the question lies. So without further ado, let's jump into this box. Um, this was a very small submission because it was my first time. I didn't want to make a huge commitment. And quite honestly, uh, spoiler alert, I'm kind of glad that I didn't <laughs> for, for for a few reasons. And we'll, we'll discuss each reason. And I think, you know, if you're a, an avid collector, you probably know one of the main reasons, uh, which comes down to value of the uh, actual uh, products and when I say value I mean kind of resell value uh, whereas uh, you're just not quite getting it as much as you would with other uh, companies and there are a couple other issues as well which we will talk about as we go through this so I wanted this to be a very raw transaction here I mean that's kind of fun right 
I do like their slabs, I have to admit. I don't like them as much on modern cards, which is what this package is, but I do really do enjoy them on um, vintage cards. So when I start kind of getting deeper into vintage, I'll probably, I might reach back out to SGC because I do know some of their, you know, value uh, propositions for their cards, for vintage cards actually hold up quite well in SGC. But when it comes to, to modern or ultra modern, um, that's where you can kind of, go awry and that's kind of where I went awry um, after you know now <laughs> if you're now getting these back I definitely know what to do and what not to do now moving forward so there is the bundle so this is a total of five five cards it will have some explanations in here for some things that are going on we will unbundle these all right, and the majority of these are going to be my uh, PC card, one of my PC cards, my PC baseball, which is Kyle Lewis. Let's go Seattle Mariners. We haven't ever won anything, so I got to give love. <laughs> uh, there's not much love to give, but um, all right, so we will kind of jump into some of these. Um, I'm going to be, you know, kind of showing different pop reports and talking about value and, and some other things as we go through this video. It's going to be very kind of on the fly. As you know, I kind of do these videos in one take. I don't cut too much stuff in unless we're talking about uh, tons of mail day uh, submissions and, and the what. But this one, I like to just kind of flow off the top of the head. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to move these off screen, is this. Sorry about that bump. Okay, so this was very disappointing because I submitted this without any understanding that SGC doesn't do thick cards. And I had no clue about that because as you will see here, I looked on their website and there wasn't anywhere that I could find that said that they did not accept um, thicker cards, which a, I think is really weird because nowadays you're kind of losing out on a huge majority of, of the cards that are out there. But um, B, it would be cool if they would actually like put it on their site somewhere. And maybe I'm missing it. So if somebody knows where this is, you know, you know, listed on their website that they don't accept thick cards. And I am more than happy to eat my words and say, never mind, that was my bad. But here's the page that I found. And again, it shouldn't be very hard to find these things, right? If this is something so major as they don't do thick cards. But um, I looked here, you know, baseball, they talk about just like certain sets and certain, um, you know, magazine cards and stuff like that. Golf obviously is a bunch of random stuff. Um, you know, basketball, they don't do perforated magazine cards. Sure, okay, no problem, you know. Um, you know, you're kind of your basic stuff, right? You know, kind of weird off off the wall sort of stuff but i don't see anywhere on here where it says that you can't do thick cards so anyways i was really disappointed because i was excited to have back this dk um, that i sent in which obviously right now you know we're in early december and the thick of the of the football season about to go into playoff time you know and i have this uh, uh panini one uh rookie that i got back earlier this year you know probably in early summer so got this for a great deal um it was in the the panini one you know case i ripped it because i wanted to get it graded um so i sent this to sgc <laughs> oh man lesson learned don't do that so lesson number one with sgc make sure you double check what their cards that they do not grade and specifically if you're trying to get graded thick cards um, i would definitely not recommend going with them because just kind of sad that I'm not going to be able to have this card graded here going into the playoffs. Uh, all right. Issue number one. All right, moving on. So the next issue is really just going to be overall value and how much value you can find with SGC cards. So I, you know, I understand that there isn't always you know you're not always going to get perfect grades i get it you're not always going to have you know um you know the value return that you hope for i get it but you know sometimes if you don't get an sgc 10 or higher you know, you know the whatever the higher labels gold labels whatever those are i mean really you're kind of just losing money um so we're going to go through some of these cards and like i said these are mostly kyle lewis with one other one in there um but these are cards that i pulled um 
over the over the summer and super happy about these cars and I wanted to get them graded. So um, this one I sent in and this was a um, Panini Elite EX and this is um, you know uh, auto so got a good auto grade got a 10 out of 10 uh however the you know the actual grade itself was a 8.5 so again i don't know why exactly um you know again i'm not gonna sit here and stare at the card on on, on video but you know if there was something significant i would have probably noted it before i sent it in but at any rate um i'm probably gonna do so i'm probably gonna crack this out and i'm gonna send this over to uh uh, PSA because if this could cross over to a nine, then you know what it's it's gonna have extremely much more value. And this card itself is a very low population card. Um, there are a few uh, different um, parallels of this card, but this one in particular, it only has a pop two total, not not just in a grade, but total population is a two um and, and that's in a in a nine so it seems like this card is pretty you know pretty standardly getting nines out of the two that have been graded so i'm assuming this one could probably get a nine as well so you know this cost me 15 dollars each to grade so you know it's kind of 15 dollars down the drain but i guess the way i'm trying to look at it and stay positive is that i got kind of a pre-grade <laughs> before i sent it to psa so i pay 15 dollars to get a pre-grade Oh man. All right. Anyways, moving on. All right. This next one I pulled out of a pack as well. So this is a 2020 Don Russ. This is the signature series, Kyle Lewis. Um, again, great auto. Got a 10 on the auto. And they gave me nine, five on the card itself. And again, this card is sharp. Like this is, this is well centered. Um, no surface issues. I mean, these cards actually look pretty cool in these cases because they have that, you know, nice bright shine to them and it pops off the black. But again, for the value, it's just not worth it. And it's sad to say that, but as you'll see, um, this card, you know, is a pretty low population also. I think it's gonna be, uh, you know, one of those ones where you just don't see them too often, which is funny because you can buy them all over the internet, but for some reason, either no one's gotten their grades back yet or nobody's grading these for some reason, but this one, has again only four in the total population and out of those all of them are nines so i figured this is a nine five the odds are pretty good that it could cross over to a 10 and that's generally kind of what i found with sgc is uh nine fives you know you got a decent chance of crossing over to a psa 10 because um according to lure sgc grades a little bit harder and i've kind of noticed that myself so at any rate, this one, if I got a 10 on it, I'd have a pop one right now. <laughs> so, you know, of course, I'm sure there's other others in the pipeline, but um, that would be pretty fun. All right. And the last Kyle Lewis is the one that I was really hoping to get a super score on. But again, same as the last one, got a, um, a 10 on the auto. So Kyle has a pretty decent auto. I mean, it's not the most beautiful autograph I've ever seen, but it's definitely a, a cool autograph. And um, this one... You know, it was, uh, actually, I think I bought this one. I didn't pull this one out of a pack. So I did buy this one online. I think it looked good in, you know, the centering looked pretty good. Um, so I felt good about it. So sent it in. And again, I think this might be one that I could probably get a 10 on if I cross it over to PSA. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, again, this is the Bowman first. So this is a great one to have for any, you know, upcoming player, um, especially with the auto, uh, which was a refractor, but it's not it's just the regular one but still a pretty pretty sweet card um this one is a population of 123 total 79 or 10 so you can see it has a very high gem rate so to me if it's over 50 percent gem rate there's a darn good chance i would gem out at um 95 sgc to a, a 10 psa uh and then only 43 of those are nine so again the nines are about a third while the tens are about 60 you know five percent or so so definitely going to crack this out get this over to psa and hopefully get this back at, uh, a 10 because then again the, the value is going to really really jump up on these um and as you'll see here you know what i want to talk about too this is the only one also i just want to say out of those kyle lewis cards that has a um a comp for whatever reason i sense probably because the other ones have such low populations there's no comps out there but i looked online tried to find comps for um for these cards because i wanted to be able to show you kind of the value um differences in these um and this one 
I, I just want to show you. So just a couple of days ago, it sold at a BGS 95 with a 10 auto for only $208. Now, granted, that is with um, uh, an auction. So this wasn't a buy it now. But that is really low because I know this card can sell for upwards of $400. Um, there are a few listed, you know, for that amount and more on um, eBay right now. So 208 seems really low. But again, that just shows the discrepancy between the grading companies. And BGS 95 is actually slightly higher and more desirable than a SGC 95. So that would even make this one sell for maybe, you know, the same or even less, which would be really disappointing. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of like point that out that... I do see that, you know, there are some good things about SGC and I'll definitely say they have great um, slabs for older cars, for vintage. Um, I do think once I get more into vintage, that is going to be probably um, some of the grading I'll do will be with SGC. But for modern cars, they're just, they just get beat up when it comes to the value and it's just not worth it. So if you have a card that looks like a crossover to uh, PSA and you feel pretty confident about it, I would definitely, uh, you know, take a shot at it because like I said, it is, it is like night and day when it comes to a PSA 10 versus a SGC 9.5. You're talking close to double the price of what you can get for it on the market. So definitely I recommend doing that. All right, and the last card, which was another one I was a little uh, a little sad about, um, was the uh, uh, Rob Gronkowski Tops Platinum Rookie card. Um, I think it's a really cool card. It's numbered out of uh, 999 there, so it's number 570. So, you know, I think Gronkowski is going to have a big future, obviously, a lot of things going on with him always. Um, and I do think that, you know, he's a Hall of Famer, obviously, and blah 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 there's gonna be a lot of things going on so um didn't get an auto grade which i thought was really interesting so i don't know if it's because i didn't choose that or what but i would have assumed that i would have gotten an auto grade so anyways here's the thing if i can cross this over to a psa 9 i mean again you're gonna see double the value of this card if it goes over there so i probably am gonna do that and um you know Again, it's just one of those things, SGC, I'm sorry. But, you know, as a collector and an investor, like, I want my cards to be as valuable as possible. And honestly, sitting in these slabs, there is just no, you know, there's no comparison when it comes to PSA. So, you know, this card itself, you know, will definitely um, be something that, you know, I'll be looking to slid over there. And as you can see here from the pop report, I mean, only 17 of these total graded, you know, so that's pretty low considering this is a 2010. Um, out of those, four of them are 10s, eight of them are 9s, five of them are 8s. So again, I think this could probably get a 9. So that means, you know, I'm about right there. The 50% um, 9 rate is about right. And that's probably what this will end up getting if I send it over. So at any rate, I, um, I like this card and hopefully I can uh, cross it over along with the other Kyle Lewis cards. All right. Well... That was my rant and I kept it short and sweet and hopefully uh, you guys can learn from my mistake here. Um, you know, SGC has its its place in the hobby. It has its, you know, kind of niche within the hobby and I definitely, you know, respect some things about them. Like I said, customer service, two thumbs up, you know, when it comes to um, their overall uh, slabs, not bad. I like them. But the problem right now, guys, is we got to make sure that we get a good return on our investment. And until the market decides to change or, you know, people start getting back into SGC for some reason, um, the slabs are just not going to hold the same value. So uh, unfortunately, that is kind of my, my review of SGC. And, you know, hopefully um, things will change in the future. But for now, I'm taking some of these over to PSA. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.